the Thoughty OT podcast. Well, there there is, I suppose, um, an aspect of gaslighting that I think is very, just from my own personal experiences, but from, you know, just thinking about it, um, the aspects of stereotyping and infantilization. Do you have do you have any any experiences with do those I? two or ways of, <laughs> ways of explaining explaining it that might be oh helpful? Where do I start? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I get infantilized a lot, um, and it's because it's often because of my shutdowns and because sometimes it is stereotyped that autistic people aren't really adults, like autistic mm. adults aren't really adults, and we're just really. Um, like children or you know whatever which obviously is not the case and I do get infantilized a lot especially when I'm because I'm an ambulatory wheelchair user so I have a wheelchair so especially when I'm in my wheelchair <laughs> but like recently I went to get a vaccine and there was a nurse who she infantilized me so much she was she made me she treated me like I was an actual toddler like she was there like oh you're here for your ouchie vaccine you don't know what a vaccine oh is do you oh I'll get how about I give you a lolly and I'm like I don't want a lolly <laughs> and she was like how about I give you a treat you can have a sticker book and I was like oh my god did yeah. they like know that you were autistic the before? Thing, they, the thing is, yeah. she knew I was autistic, but she was mm. treating me perfectly fine until the moment she knew I was autistic. I was like, "Oh, so yeah. hi, I'm autistic." So just yeah, that just, tends to be that way, doesn't what, it? That's just, why I'm doing this. But while I'm stimming, I can still it's helping me focus on what you're saying, and it's you know I just carry on. You know, I can understand what you're saying because I'm stimming. But then it was like a curtain dropped, and she was like treating me like a baby all of a sudden. And it was, yeah, a massive example of infantilization. And I have to say, Hmm. it's not usually that bad. That's a very worst case scenario sort of thing. Most professionals know a lot better. But these things do happen because there's a very, there's a big misconception of what it means when we are stimming. Like it can look childish to some people when we're stimming. Yeah. Like it can look like we're playing or... (laughs) It's really interesting, sort of like the dynamic between how we are when we like what people say about us when we're younger, as opposed to what people say about us when we're older. Like when we're younger, we're kind of characterized as this like little, little professor, kind of you know, interesting child that doesn't seem to be able to communicate with people their own age and prefers to talk to adults and like. So sort of this kind of like old soul mentality <laughs> of, of, of what we're like. That was me. <laughs> and then when we get older, it's like it's the opposite. It's like, you know, I, I think I have been thinking about it a lot. And I think it's a lot to do with, you know, just the fact that we, we don't necessarily apply ourselves to those social norms in at any age, really. And so our people always don't necessarily know where to put us. Um, and when we don't fit those particular stereotypes of what adults should be like and what adults should say and what kind of um, life um, skills they have, then they, they kind of all automatically put us into this box of like, oh, they're not proper adult yet, they're immature. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and that's it, isn't it? It's like I'm still a capable, mature adult, even when I'm stimming, I'm still a capable mature adult even when I'm non-verbal mm. like I can still <laughs> I can still make choices I can still you know I'm still an independent adult like, these things don't change just because I'm shut down or because I'm autistic mm. yeah especially if I've been empowered with one-to-one support to be independent mm. like I find mm. that interesting too because it's um People think that being dependent on care and support is like the opposite of independence. And yeah. I, I get that. I understand why, because on the face of it, that's exactly what it sounds like. But the definition of independence is to be outside of or like outside of other people's control so that you can make your own choices, you can have your own freedom to yeah. do things. Yeah. And I think with me in particular, like I have 16 out of 100 average life skills I need like a lot of life life skills and self-care help and independence 
sure. from carers and things. And But that care support helps me be independent and make those choices. And I would never be independent without it. Like I could never do anything like this. And I think part of that is that people look at autistic people and they think, oh, they infantilize us. And they're like, well, they need all of this care support. They're not independent adults. Whereas actually they could, if you empower us properly, we can still be independent. It's just different to how society expects it to be. Yeah. I think that that's, that's a really good point. It's, um, and also the idea of independence is very funny anyway, because it's it's always it's never a black and white thing. It's very much like a, a grey sliding scale <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Like everyone's dependent on some human for for well actually for quite a lot of things in life. Like the people who make all the furniture and the equipment <laughs> that you have, the people who um, provide water mm. and and take out the garbage and you know, produce food that you can consume and it's sell the food effort, to you. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and with support, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Like someone's providing you a service in order for you to, you know, get, get, get through life a little bit easier yeah. or, or be able to, I guess, re reach a level where you're able to, to feel happy and, and, you know, fulfilled with your needs and stuff. Yeah, see, I see it like that. I see it as like everyone else is at like a baseline where they can thrive and be independent. And disabled people, autistic people might be here and we just sort of need that little bit of extra help to get to that baseline. And that's all that yeah. care is. It helps us yeah. get to the same baseline as everyone else so that we can still thrive and be mm. independent and be mature adults. <laughs> and um, yeah. I forgot what I was going to say. Train of thought just disappeared. But. <laughs> yeah, there is an aspect of um, like, like it's particularly the stereotyping thing that I feel has been, has been the most harmful for me in relationships. Yeah. Hey up YouTube, hope you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far. If you want to check out the full episode, you can find it here on my YouTube channel under the podcast section, or you can go to Spotify, Apple, Google to check it out on different podcasting streaming services. If you have enjoyed this video this far, please make sure to like, perhaps drop me a subscribe if you want to see some more content from me, and drop a comment down below, even if it's something simple like an emoji or a, or a heart. Uh, it really does help satisfy those big, YouTube algorithm gods in the sky. Anyway, I'll let you go back to it. And um, particularly stereotyping around competence in social situations and um, empathy, mm. which, you know, that that's something that, that I've experienced a lot about, you know, particularly um, intentional gaslighting about me lacking empathy or me not being able to understand um, particular social situations or perhaps situations within a friendship or a relationship. Yeah. Um, that seems to be something that's quite coherent with um, the type of gaslighting that, that, that I've experienced in life. Um, and it's, it's weird because like, you know, you only have to like watch some of the content that I produce or the podcasts that I make to understand that very you know, I, I'm definitely not lacking. I'm definitely not lacking in empathy, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not lacking in the ability to understand social contexts and mm. situations. In fact, you know, I'd say that I probably am better that better at it than most ne neurotypicals that I've come across. Um, but anyway, it's I, I feel I feel like that's that's quite a big thing because it's, it's like some people just have an inherent like superiority uh, over us or, or they they just they can't like um accept that we're, we're mature but, but we're just mature in a different way and that we do understand things but we just navigate that in a different way yeah it's and also i feel part of my autism helps me sort of delve deep into the psychological details of like every person i meet so yeah. whatever they do or say, like I've got this little psychological thing in my brain going, oh, I know why they're saying that. I know why they're doing that. <laughs> like I passed my child psychology NVQ4 
at Cambridge University. I started it wow. at like seven in the morning and I finished it by like 10 at night, like every module, every exam, like I passed it, aced it. And a lot of it, and the tutors sort of said it was because I, it was online, by the way, in a sure. sort of learning environment yeah. that suited me. <laughs> but the tutor said it was because she thought it was my autism that could help me dive in dive into that psychological detail and work out and she said actually like you're more empathetic than maybe some neurotypical people are because you have been taught to sort of fight to understand people because you're always misunderstood and you're always people always claiming that you're misunderstanding them so and I think that's a big part of it like like you I'm, yeah. I'm hugely empathetic like it to the point that it hurts but that empathy can also shut me down so it can appear yeah. like I have no empathy it can feel like it can look like I'm really cold or I'm not responding but that's mm. because I'm so shut down with the emotional pain of it like my entire body will be on fire with like volcanoes I'll be itchy everywhere I'll be in mm. pain and it will shut me down and I don't know how to respond yeah. to those situations yeah and like so I've, I've, often... I've been in those sorry I've been in those kind of situations where I've like had people tell me something that's really emotional mm. and you know I I relate to what you're saying because I like I, I, I make like less eye contact. I kind of look into the distance. I'm really trying to process and understand what someone's saying. Yeah. And some people take that as me not being interested and not being caring, whereas I'm just really trying to understand where they're coming from and what they're experiencing. That's uh. And also, it's like it's partly like a defense mechanism because we've a lot of autistic people would have been told off and sort of shamed and invalidated and unintentionally gaslighted so often about not being empathetic and not reacting properly in certain yeah. social situations where like emotional values are really high and that can create this trauma defense mode where we're like actively hiding from it because our body already expects to be in trouble and we shut down mm. and for me i i soon learned like very quickly at a young age that i was the problem like I made that whatever emotional situation was going on, I made it worse. So I would run away and hide in like yeah. wherever it was, but I distanced myself from them because I believed and I truly believed this, that if I was out the way, their problem would go away. But mm. Mm. that just made it worse because they thought I didn't care and I had no empathy and I was just being selfish and that couldn't yeah. be further from the truth. And it's a huge stereotype, which again, has a big impact on the whole infertilization and also it links back into the unintentional gaslighting. Yeah. It makes makes relationships quite difficult. <laughs> it's putting it, putting it lightly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.